from Ethiopia. Assalamu uh, alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu wa rahmatullah. Uh, Sheikh, uh, I have a specific question. First, uh, I met uh, one friend who who is uh, an ex-Muslim, and uh, I asked him the reason why he converted his religion. And he said to me that uh, he was living with his parents in Saudi Arabia, and his father got executed because uh, he changed his religion or converted it. And uh, I asked him for a proof, and he really shocked me by showing me a hadith uh, that was uh, Ali radiallahu anhu, he burned some people because of uh, them converting their religion. And in fact, it is uh, Sahih Bukhari. And uh, I wasn't able to answer anything. And I told him just to wait, to just, you know, refer about this hadith. Uh, if there is anything that I can tell him about it. Okay. And make a clarification also for okay. myself. First of all, Sarah, you have to be careful in what you ask in public. Because you may earn all the sins that misconceptions may cause in people's heads because of your question. So you have to be careful in what you say in public. Is it going to benefit other Muslims or not? Maybe you're genuinely asking to know, but you don't know whether this would confuse others or not. Maybe you have a hidden agenda to cast doubts about Islam indirectly, pretending that it's an honest uh, uh, question. This is in Allah's hands. Nevertheless, I will answer you. Number one, the hadith of Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, burning people because they converted their religion is not true. Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, fought with people who said to him that you are the creator of the heavens and the earth. You are our, our Lord that we worship. So they did not make him a prophet. They did not make him a saint. They did not make him a messenger. They made him Allah. Ta'ala Allah. He tried to advise them to call them back to Islam. They said, no, you are our God. We worship you. So he ordered them to be burnt. His cousin, Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with them all, said to him, the Prophet prohibited killing people by burning them because no one tortures with fire except Allah the Almighty. This is the torment of Allah but he had already executed them by doing this to make them an example to others so that they won't do such a heinous, blasphemous act. So it was not changing their religion. Number two, the issue of execution in Islam is not to be dealt with individually. This is not a jungle where the survival of the fittest. When I see something wrong, I change it with my hand. If someone changes his religion, I kill him. If someone fornicates and he's married, I stone him to death. I will be a murderer. This is not to me to do. This is only to be carried out by the Muslim ruler who has a panel of judges to give their verdict and he carries out this verdict. So it's a system, it's a sharia, ah, not for individuals, but for the head of state. So if there is no head of state, if you're living in Europe, for example, can the Muslim community execute such prescribed punishments? The answer is no. This is not to them, even if they have a leader, even if they have an imam. This is something only to be carried out by the head of the state, the head of the country. Thirdly, according to Sharia law, the Prophet والسلام, said, whoever changes his religion, then his prescribed punishment is to be executed. Again, by whom? By Tom, Dick or Harry? No, it's only by the head of state. 
And if there is no head of state, he's none of my business. I don't care whether he changes his religion or changes his gender. This is up to him. The, the one to implement Sharia is the head of state. So whoever changes his religion from Islam to another religion in a Muslim country, according to their laws and to their Sharia and to the Muslim court, a panel of judges sit with him, try to convey the message and how dangerous this is and what will happen to him. If he does not revert back to Islam, the Muslim ruler may execute him. And this is his call and this is his decision. So, number four, how is it possible for a Muslim like yourself to take a friend who was an ex-Muslim, someone who curses your religion, someone who's trying his level best to take you out of Islam with him, whether you are willing or not, I don't know, but I'm assuming that you're not. That's why you're calling me. How is it possible if this person slandered your father, if she said, by the way, your father molested me, your father raped me, would you still be friend with her? If she curses your mom and says your mom is a prostitute, would you still be best friend with her? If she tells everybody that you had an affair with her brother and she shows them the proofs which she made up, would you still be friend with her? Of course not. Why? Because you honor yourself. You have dignity. But when it comes to your religion, someone curses your Lord or your Quran or your prophet or your religion, and you say, I was shocked. So I thought of asking. This means that your Islam and your Iman is not certain. You don't have certainty. Because if you had, you would have definitely said, nope, I don't believe in this. If someone were to doubt you and say, which orphanage did your parents take you from? You said, no, I, am, I was born to my real parents. How do you know? Did you do your DNA test? No. So how do you know? You weren't there. Would you accept this and go and do your DNA test or you will take it for granted that, no, this is ridiculous. This is stupid. I am the legitimate child of my parents. How is it that you're not willing to put up a fight blindly defending your religion when someone like that casts doubt in it? This shows that you are in great danger, Sarah. May Allah make things easy for you and for us.